commonest things to do when you're a horticulturalist is to learn plant names and uh, I've been teaching plant identification for over 36 years and I want to show you 10 different ways you can learn botanical names. It's not so bad when the plants are labelled and you've got all the labels on them but what do you do when you haven't got the labels? So let's have a look at 10 strategies to help you learn your plants. One of the key methods of learning or remembering things is what we call the method of loci. This has been used for centuries by the Greeks and the Romans. It's sometimes referred to as the memory palace. So what you do is you have some places that you're familiar with that let's say you walk around an area and you know the different places en route. So let's take something simple like the kitchen. So what you can do is attach one plant to each location. So if we've got our locations at the top there, you've got the fridge. We're going to attach Quercus roba, the toaster, Vega sylvatica, the beach, the microwave, Fraxinus excelsior, the ash, the hob, Corylus avalana, the hazel and the sink, Sex over the white willow. So what we do is we just think, right, we're going to attach to the fridge an oak and try and visualize that oak leaf or acorn in the fridge you go to the fridge and there's some acorns in there and you might have wanted a piece of cheese we go to the toaster and what's that out of the toaster we've got a beech leaf growing or beech twig growing out of the toaster and then we go to the microwave and there's an ash in the microwave getting fried up or cooked up then we go to the hob and we're just sort of in the in the saucepan there we're boiling up a nice bit of hazel and hazelnuts and then there's the sink where we've got some lovely white willow just ready to be washed in the sink because it grows by the water you've created a series of locations and you've attached a plant to it so when you've got to recall them you've got to think right now what about the hazel Oh yeah, the hazel, that was the one on the hob. We were cooking up some hazel. Uh, or it might be the, in a, you know, a beech tree. Well, that was the toaster. Vega sylvatica by the toaster. And so the method of loci or memory palace is another way that you can learn your plant names just by making more connections in your brain, having two or three things to remind you of that particular plant. And of course, the more crazy the story, the better and in this next one you'll see I've made uh, an animation and I've tried to break the word down a little bit and think of any sort of unusual things or things in the name that will help me remember the plant let's take a look so this is an animation I made and this is Quercus rober it's a little bit quirky this rowing this is a heart-shaped chordate leaf tilia this is a cat catalpa and it's climbing up the Alps Catalpa has a triangular leaf. And this is Betula has small triangular. There's a diamond shape, diamond ring. Circus siliquestrum, we've got kidney shaped leaves. And so you could put yourself an animation, create a series of drawings and a funny animation. So that's all about pictures and different things that will help you remember the name. So quirky oak, Quercus. That's a bit quirky. You've got the robe rowing. So a picture of rowing. Um, then you might have, for example, chordate, your heart shape. So a picture of a heart is quite good next to the line. And then you've got the next one. You might have catulpa. So you might have a cat uh, at the beginning of your picture. Then you've got a picture of the Alps, catulpa. And then... Uh, so that's got a triangular leaf triangle so just drawing the shapes if you like pictures and uh, you're quite a visual kind of learner that might be something that you like to do on bachelor i bet so taking a bet on roulette might be a way of remembering that one so you could do yourself a, like a, a memory map or a mind map to help you remember each bit of the name and the more unusual and the crazier the better you're more likely to remember it so if you're enjoying the video uh, so far, uh, you can do the plant identification course. Just click the link above and it's all free and you can work your way through that plant identification course and hopefully that will help your ident. 
Also, if you can hit the like button and subscribe, that'll be brilliant. And uh, just wish you well with the rest of the methods of learning plant identification. Of course, there are lots of other methods like writing out the name hundreds of times, making cards where you can match them, and there are several good apps on your phone. Um, so hopefully you'll find one method that you'll enjoy learning. So another brilliant way to learn, and it, I must admit this was the way we learnt at college when I was at Rittle College with uh, Martin Stimson, my teacher. Uh, this is the way that we were taught there, and this is the way we used for ages, and that was to just fill up some jam jars with water. And then what you do is to prepare your specimens, a bit like if you were flower arranging, where you just trim off the bottom leaves, pop your specimens in the jam jars. Okay, and then you can look them up, just check the names or whatever you want to do, because then you're looking them up again. So you've got your four kind of plants you want to learn, or your ten. Then write out a label, so what you can see here I've got Garia elliptica. Write that down, elliptica. That's one that David Douglas got in North America. I've got Melianthus major, the peanut butter plant. Pop that one underneath that one. Then I've got Choicea, Aztec Pearl, but it's changed its name. It's now Choicea, across to Wittiana, Aztec Pearl. Aztec Pearl being the cultivar. Goes in single inverted commas if it's a cultivar. And remember it's a cross, so there's a cross in the, in the middle of the name. And then I've got Salvia Hot Lips. So what you can do, obviously, the big advantage of the jam jar is that you can smell your plants. And for example, Choice has a very distinctive smell. If I rub the leaf of the peanut butter plant, you do get that peanut butter smell. It's not a peanut butter, not the peanut plant, by the way. It's just got a smell of like peanut butter. Gary Liptica, I can have a look at the tassels, these, the male catkins. Hot lips, I can really have a look at it and feel it as it, what's the, the stem, is it cylindrical, is it square? And so you've got a lot more information, you can use a lot more of your senses in learning them. And of course, as soon as you're ready, you can whip away the, all the names, put some numbers and test yourself, or just, just now if you can test yourself. So what's this one? Let you have a think about that. Number one, number two, number three and number four so i hope you got them uh, but that's a great way and probably still one of the very best ways of learning your plant names but let's have a look at some more ways of learning plants of course a great way to learn plant names is to look up the latin or botanical translation uh, and that way you'll, you'll get to learn different words. For example, look up Ranunculus, I might have a book on Latin, and uh, if I turn to that, then the Latin for Ranunculus or Rana is frog. And so that, I'll remember that anything Rana has got to do with frogs that lives in the marshes, and a lot of the Ranunculus grow in the marshes. Similar to that, of course, is books like this, The Plant Name Simplify. There's a whole series of these books, and you can look up anything and find out uh, exactly what it means. So I'm looking at Chrysanthemum, Anthemum, Anthos is flower, of course, on the Chrysanthemum, and from Chrysos, gold, and Anthemum, flower. So golden flower, in some cases. Um, so there's a whole series of these different plant names and their meanings. So doing that is a great way and just write down the translations when you do them. Uh, there's also a slightly easier way of doing that. You can use Dave's Botanary, uh, B-O-T-A-N-A-R-Y, if you Google search that and you can type in any name and it will tell you the translation. That's a brilliant resource. Of course you might like to find a bit of information about your plants and who collected them. So having a look at a book like The Plant Hunters by Musgrove, 
and uh, this book it will tell you some of the plants a particular plant hunter collected so for example we'll got pictures Antidesia Ethiopica you can see they're one of Francis Masson's uh, plants Strelitzia regia Joseph Banks when he went to Australia with Captain Cook we've got a protea there so there's lots of things you could do to learn your plants uh, or it might be the origin of plants so again looking up the name in the back might just help you to create another memory link so that you're less likely to forget the plant because you've attached a story to it plus of course you get the passion of the plant hunters and you find out a bit more about them so that's a great way let's just have a look at Dave's botany to see how that works you've got your plant ident list look at the first plant you want to look up uh, just search for Dave's botany b-o-t-a-n-a-r-y then into the box type the name in this case we've got the uh, aricaria and you can see that it's named after the Aracarian Indians, etc. Uh, used to use it in their blow darts to as poison. Uh, so then just look up another one here. We've got, uh, you can see there, there's uh, Unido. And we'll just look up Unido. And you straight away get the translation. And the translation is, generally speaking, you just can only one referring to the fruit. It's not very palatable um, so that's a great way so break down all the translations and it helps you to put together a vocabulary of plant names and if they pop up in another name then you've got it this one is Quizlet Quizlet is a brilliant uh, um, app uh, that you can download and in this case I've put all my RHS uh, plant idents on this one so you can just click on a link and you've got three different ways and if you pay subscribe you can actually get other ways of learning so in this case i've made flashcards. you can just flip them over very easy to make you just type your names of your plants down the left hand side it's actually got pictures in so you can put your own pictures in or you can click the learn and uh, you've got a set of four possible answers and click on the one you think it is so that's another way of learning using uh, this one uh, and another way of learning is you can use uh, the matching exercise as well. So what you do is pick on your list and then you go to match. And what it will do, it will generate a matching game. So you have to click on the one, then click on the name of the plant, then the picture, and then they'll uh, disappear. And you just keep working your way through and they'll disappear. And at the end of it all, it's even got how long it took you and so you can test yourself again see if you are faster next time so uh, as you can see on this one so that is Quizlet it's a, just a very good package you can just go online quizlet.com or you can download the app uh, if you search for my ident so I can add you into the group as well One of the ways in which I learnt a lot of plant names was playing a game called Beat the Book. And what I used to do was to get a, a decent book, something like a Collins or an Osborne, a small book, and I would spend 15-20 minutes learning my plants, looking through the different pictures and trying to learn my plants. Started with the common name, then we went on to the genus, and then the species. And uh, so what I used to do then was I'd close the book after 10-15 minutes and then I would see if I could beat the book. So the way I used to play the game was I'd open the page and if I knew it, like that one, Prunus domestica, which is the plum, I got a point. And if I opened it and I didn't know what it was, then the book would get a point. And I used to play that game until I could beat the book. And uh, it's a really good way because, I don't know, there's probably uh, 80 to 100 plants in here. So if you do it over two or three days, you'd be surprised what you'll pick up. And uh, you can start with the, with, with the common names, then the genus, and then the species. But it's a great way. So, oh, cider gum, eucalyptus gunnii, strawberry tree, albutus unido.
but obviously what you must do mustn't do is look at the names at the bottom and cheat but what you can do is just once you've played if you if you lose spend a bit more time studying come back and then see if you can beat the book the next time and uh, you'll accumulate a lot of plants that way and if you want to of course you could write the names out to to spell them as well a great method to learn your botanical names and your plants is to create a herbarium book so in this one you can see that the leaves have been pressed and put in the book and you pop the name in underneath them or a description or whatever you want but this is a really good method so you can see here that I can refer to them and look at the cherry prunus avium the willow the oak quercus roba the birch betula pendula I can go back and have a look at them and uh, I can remember the leaf shapes the tips what kind of tip it's got whether it's lanceolate cuminate tip whether it's lobed so it's a great way to learn your plants let's have a look at how we do this method so you just got to make yourself a little press so all I did was to drill four holes in the corner of two pieces of wood make sure they correspond so you can put them on top of each other to drill the holes and then what you want is to get yourself uh, some lovely uh, some get yourself some butterfly nuts and bolts so you can pop them through so we'll just pop that through the side here just lift that up a little bit pop that through there and then to prepare your leaves all you've got to do is to get a load of kitchen roll and you want a piece at least one piece you can do more of course put some kitchen roll in the bottom place your leaf down flat or in this case I've got some nice uh, geranium rose on there I'm just going to pin that down a little bit I've got a bit of euchre and I'm gonna whoops a bit windy today so we'll put those two down I'll put my tissue on top and what you've got to do is draw the moisture out of the flowers okay so I'm just gonna put that over the top there and I'm gonna press this so I'm gonna now fit the rest of my press so we'll just pop that over the top there over there over there over there and then all I've got to do then is to do my butterfly nuts up that's done it's pretty tight as tight as you can as hand tight as you can remember this is a method that was used by the plant hunters when they were bringing plants back from China and uh, you just need to leave that for two or three days until that sucked the moisture out um, you can use obviously big books instead uh, some people even microwave it to do a really fast job if you're in a hurry um, so that's going to get you some nice specimens to put into your book so in your book what you want to do you don't really need the plastic on top so so your specimen when it comes out should look something like that that's a liriodendron tulipifera the tulip tree one I've done earlier and in order to put it down don't really need the the plastic because that can make it go a bit moldy but all you do is use a bit of PVA glue so if you've got a bit of PVA glue just paint the backs of them just a little bit of paint on the back press it down and then you can write the name down and that will be fine uh, if you want to a little bit later you can put a cover over it doesn't need it and then you've got your lovely sort of herbarium specimens if you want to do the flower you could obviously add the leaf as well and the seed and different things but that will make you a nice little kind of herbarium that you can learn your plants from and you can learn a lot while you're doing it keep reminding yourself what the plant is you're pressing keep reminding yourself of the leaf shape so that's herbarium specimens Another great way of learning plants of course is to draw around the leaves so you can place your leaf flat down on a piece of paper and just draw around the edge so just drawing around the edge and again if you do this it just helps you to remind you about the leaf shape so in this case I've got a tulip tree which is quite truncated it's chopped at the top 
and I'm just going to just draw around that a little bit just to give me a little impression of that tulip tree and a very thin stalk and so we've just got that so it's a nice and easy way of learning if you like to draw obviously another way of course you could do a watercolor or color it in uh, if that's the way you like to learn and you can even do it with fresh specimens you can lay them out this geranium here this geranium roseanne we can so with this fresh specimen geranium roseanne i can draw around it a little bit don't have to have it pressed if you haven't got time to press it you could just draw around it just to remind you of the different leaf shapes so that's another method you can use so a great method of learning plant names is to make up a little slideshow and most computers have some form of movie maker uh, in this particular case we've got one this one is called clip champ on this particular computer so I'm going to use that one but if you've got Movie Maker or something similar, it will all do the same job. And they're all very similar. You just add a folder. You go in and create a new folder or add a folder. And then it's asking you there, create a new video. And import media. And what you can do then is just select your folder. Uh, if you want to select all of them, you can control A or just select a few of them. And then click open. And they'll all come there. Uh, into the left hand side and then you just drag and drop what you want onto the timeline at the bottom uh, obviously you may not need them that long so you just trim them by sliding the little two sort of parallel lines across so slide them in and then the next thing of course you're going to do is to add a title so you know the names um, so just add your title and then click on the actual text and then you should be to click on the blue marker there at the bottom just above your uh, pictures and then you should be able to add your text that's it so we just add that in click in the box and then just type in the name of the plant that you want so in this case we've got uh, cord, um, cord line Daphne and we've got the Pyrrhus Blur Jacqueline Postel. And so you can see how you can make up your different slideshow using that. Once you've added the names of the plants and any other information you want to put in there, of course, all you've got to do then is to add a little bit of music uh, just to make it a bit more interesting. Um, so that's quite nice there on the left hand side you can see you've got music and you can pick one that is suitable and one that you like or you can uh, in fact import your own music so we'll just uh, click on them to get a bit of a preview <laughs> find the one you want and then that one sounds about right so we'll just uh, add that and we've got our music there and all we've got to do is to shorten that music one and we're nearly ready to go get to the end of it and just shine that back right back to the three slides and it should be good nearly there once you've done that you just need really to export the video and then once you've done that it's good to play and you can keep running that or put it download it on your phone or whatever and uh, that's a good way of learning it and then if you want to you could take off the the line with the names of the plants and see if you know them. It's another good way of learning your plants. Well, I hope you've uh, picked up a few different ways to learn your plants and uh, as you get into it more and more it's like learning another language and you'll soon be uh, telling people all the different names of the plants in your garden um, so we'll see you next time <laughs>